biggest group in a year. Thank goodness for vaccinations. You know, thanks for coming out. Yeah. Um, so we've got a great presentation. I'll talk about Gary in a second, but a couple of housekeeping things real quick. Um, number one is um, we have a great relationship with the Art Association of St. Augustine. Um, they give us space for our member show and help support us. They're looking for volunteers to photograph the first Friday art walk um, coming up on June 4th and also on July 2nd and 3rd. Um, they're looking for at least one volunteer that would come out and go to the Art Association um, on Marine Street. Uh, some of you probably been there. Um, and just take take photos, you know, as you wish of what's going on and get them over. So if you're interested in doing that, please talk to Larissa. She'll get you the information. Um, secondarily, we won't be meeting here again in June. Uh, we're going to meet at the Classic Car Museum. Um, some of you have probably seen that. Um, Terry Bottom, who's not here tonight, did a great job. He set up a workshop for us. Um, who's been to the Car Museum? Um, yeah, some of you. Um, if you've been, you know that they also have a terrific photographic studio there. They've got a light box that's this about way. about the size of yeah, from the front row this way. Um, the entire ceiling is a light box. They've got a curved infinity wall so it doesn't pick up any kind of seams in the pictures. Um, a lot of supplementary lights and so forth. That's run by a fellow named Dan Bagan. Uh, Dan's a professional photographer. He's got uh, some of his work hanging in the Smithsonian. Um, but uh, he's going to let us use that equipment, guide us through uh, how he does what he does. So it's a pretty neat time. Before he does that, though, the museum will be closed except to St. Augustine Camera Club members. Um, so you can bring in your tripod, photograph the cars, the details, whatever you want to do um, for the first hour. And then we'll turn it over to Dan. Is that um, on US 1 or is it downtown? It's on US one. Yeah. So one on US going, one. Going south. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on yeah. The left. Yeah. yeah. So past uh, St. Augustine Shores. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you're headed that way, Moultrie yeah. area. Um, so that's a that's a sign up. Um, so there's a web link on the uh, on the St. Augustine Camera Club website. There, you can also get to, get to that through the Facebook page. Uh, there's a, a nominal cost. Uh, the club out of your dues is paying for the workshop and subsidizing the cost of going to the museum. If you sign up now, it's five bucks. If you come at the door, it's 10 bucks. Um, anything else? All right. Yeah, yes, I will okay, be developing pictures for the libraries. Please bring some. Thank you. Absolutely. What library is that? Uh, next one will be Anastasia Island. Anastasia Island. Are you going to collect them next at our next club meeting as well? Pictures? Tonight, I'm collecting for the Southeast Library. In June, at the museum, I will be there collecting for the Anastasia uh, Island Library. Excellent. Okay. I'm doing every month. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else before we turn it over to Gary? It's on the list. All right. Um, who's had their picture published in Sports Illustrated? Anybody? <laughs> Yeah, Gary. Um, so Gary McCall's uh, kind enough to join us. So I've seen some of some of his work, and I think we we came across you on Instagram, you know. So and um, and we're just blown away. Um, so Gary's a professional freelance sports photographer, been in Sports Illustrated and been featured uh, in uh, CNN's website as well. As I understand it, team photographer for the uh, professional basketball team in Jacksonville the Giants. Um, so. Without further ado, we'll turn it over to you. Um, Gary will show us what he wants to show us, and we'll have a question and answer if that's okay with you. Absolutely. So, so you can hear me? How far do I need to stay back? Well, the rules change every few minutes with these things. Yeah. Even more so in my business, dealing with sports teams, from colleges to high schools to pro teams, everybody's got their own rules, and they change every five minutes. So, if it's okay, I'm not gonna have my mask on but I'll stay back here. I don't really want to stay back here, but if I wander amongst you, you can run that way. Um, my name is Gary McCullough. I live in Ponte Vedra. I feel like I am speaking to a room full of master chefs, if you will, gourmet chefs, chefs, and I own a McDonald's. Uh, I do not 
cons I do not understand photography as much as the least of you. And I, I do not understand the terminology we use to talk about cameras. Uh, I was quickly embarrassed years ago on the sidelines of a football game when a local high school teacher came up to me and started talking what normal camera people talk, and I had no idea what he was saying. It's uh, probably still the case. So, why am I here? My expertise is media. I am um, hmm, 30 years ago, or I'm getting old, 30 years ago, I left a sales job to go into public relations. I have been a drive time talk show host in Milwaukee. I produced a secular, uh, syndicated radio show, television. I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget. Um, owned a radio station, and I own, oh, and I own two newswire services right now. That's where the bulk of my money comes from because even though I am a regularly employed sports photographer in the Jacksonville area, I could not raise the six kids that you saw earlier on the screen. There's no way I could have paid for that one. I looked up the, the amount of money that's paid to sports photographers on the, across the nation. Their websites went from 28000 to $58,000. And I don't know how, who could raise six kids on that kind of money. I couldn't have. So I made my money in the media business. A lot of it was radio, a little bit of television, very little bit of print. But uh, what I brought to my sports photography is what I used to build those other businesses. It's, um, it's more about the people that I met and becoming their friends and becoming useful to them than anything I knew about photography. So, uh, with that, if anybody wants to go ahead and go, <laughs> the um, if seriously, if you ask me a question about photography, I'm probably going to turn around and ask one of you guys to answer it because I won't know the question. I won't know. Um, F stop, uh, depth of field, all that kind of stuff. I understand it basically. I can get the job done, but but that's not what I'm here for tonight. Why? Would you want to hear what I have to say? If you want to do is become a sports photographer, it's primarily giving media people, which I do understand, what they want. Um, started out, uh, high school football game. My kids were playing for St. Augustine High School. I've got this big old press badge because hey, I'm a big radio dude and I'm a big TV dude and all that kind of stuff. So I've got a press pass and I've got I didn't know what kind of camera it was. It was a Kodak, it was digital, it was about 300 bucks, but I got to be on the sidelines because of my press pass. And that's all I wanted to do. So I'm on the sidelines, I've taken pictures. Before you know it, I, a buddy of mine at St. Augustine Record runs a couple of them and pays me $25 you know, to give a few photos. That's, this is fun, I enjoy this. Uh, my kids are, I got two kids in high school now. I buy some more gear. I go to a workshop, I go to YouTube, I still don't know what I'm doing, but luckily it's a digital camera. Had I been around, I bet, is there anybody in here that doesn't know how to shoot with film? Does not know how to shoot with film? I don't know how to shoot with film. I don't understand it, I've never developed it. When I'm in a media room in a Jaguars game, and all the guys talk about burning this and whatever that, and dodging, dodging. dodging that's the word, see? <laughs> yeah. I just started, mm -hmm. and eventually they started making fun of me because I really don't know what I'm, I don't, I can't participate in the conversation. But uh, my kids going to uh, the football games, me on the sidelines, starting buying more expensive equipment. Digital, how many times can I make a mistake and it cost me anything? I make a lot of mistakes. Last um, night I shot a hockey, by the way, the basketball, my, my, yeah. The basketball game, the basketball team. I am their photographer, but they're like they're out, almost out of business. They, they, are, <laughs> sorry, the the Jacksonville Giants still play, but they play like at colleges and high schools. They don't, they can't even afford the the uh, Veterans Memorial Arena. So yes, I am their team photographer, but uh, I'm also, by the way, the Iceman's team photographer. Now, that keeps me busy. And last night I shot about. 1,400 photos, 1,400 photos on, a on two digital cameras. Before the job is over for that day, I have to deliver them 10 or 15 action shots that they can feed to the 
Times Union. I think yesterday was the Orlando Sentinel test. We were playing the Orlando some hockey team. A couple, whatever they, wherever they want to feed them. So 17 photos out of 1,400 that day. And then today I have to give them another 60 or 70. Um, so a lot of mistakes. Uh, I am um, a quantity photographer. Now part of those mistakes I should say, if you know, if, uh, now I asked the, the, the film question. I imagine everybody here's got a digital camera. Okay, you guys. Yes. So everybody here has got <laughs> digital cameras and know how to shoot with film. Yes. yes. Okay. All right, all right. Haven't, we haven't lost anybody yet but me because you guys start <laughs> dodging. So, um, uh, guys hitting the puck, people running back and forth. I will shoot 14 frames to get the one, hopefully in focus, of the stick hitting the, stick hitting the puck. So part of the having a lot of photos is because you're shooting bursts to get the one good shot. Jaguars game, I don't want the ball back behind Arthur Lawrence's head. I don't want it out of the frame. I want it like just leaving his hand. Well, I'm not that good. There are people in this town that have been fired by the Times Union that are that good. They used to work when there was manual focus and they got one shot and they would they, they could do it. Um, sad to say, but uh, anybody here work for the Times Union? <laughs> you know that they, when I came here, they had five photographers. Then they fired three of them like in one day, about three years ago. And then they fired what, the Force Water Retirement, the last guy. So there's one guy at the Times Union right now. He's a really good guy, but that's that's uh, that's where the newspaper business is these days. St. Augustine Record. When I came here, there was three sports writers. Now there is none. They've got you know the the uh, photos that you see. They do have a photographer, but the photos you'll see in both of these newspapers, over half of them will be self or smartphone photos by the uh, reporter. And I got nothing against that. They've got no money. They can't afford to keep their staff, and they also can't afford to keep me. I was probably the busiest um, freelancer, both for the record and then for the Times Union, until the money ran out. And like I said, I, I would expect them to cut me first, and then start firing their own people. And that's sort of what happened, but it's it's a tough business. So, um, I'm gonna look at my notes to see where I'm supposed to be picking up here. I did want to let you know too, as a photographer, see what, what screen I'm getting to here. I am what I call a mechanic. Let's get the right thing. Let's get code replacement. There we go. Let's get photo mechanic. I don't care about an update. And I want I that to load up sooner or later. I am not a, I am not an artist when it comes to photography. The um, pictures that you'll see you know, when we get some of them up there or I can tell you about them while we're waiting for them to get up there, is I get the guy catching the ball, the guy throwing the ball, the guy hitting the puck, the guy making the basket, two eyeballs, the ball, action. That's what I get. Most, a good number of photographers, there is a real art to the way they put their pictures together. I am not that guy. I have learned the basics that I need to do to get the job done. And when people hire me, it's pretty much they want a, a tight photo of an action shot without any, without the bells and whistles. And now they don't know they're not getting the bells and whistles, they just know they're just getting the action shot they want. But if you look at most photographers, and I would say most sports photographers, there is an artistic element to it. Again, not me. Uh, it's, it's the thing that I wanted to become a sports photographer, from hanging out with my kids and buying more gear, and going to classes, and then meeting the right people, some of, some of whom I already knew, that got me to where, you know, I'm contracted shooter for AP now, I'm on contract with uh, Reuters. Um, I get jobs from New York Times, I get jobs in Miami Herald, uh, I get regular work from AP, and uh, what's called AP Images, but I'm gonna get into that a little later. Uh, so, with that much said, and me drying out from being on the golf course all day shooting golfers, how many of you really think, just not really even knowing anything that I've told you about it, just saying much yet, 
How much? How, who wants to be a real photo, uh, sports photographer? Who would want to do that? Anybody? <laughs> okay. so that's actually this is a smarter crowd because that's that's that's, that's a wise answer. We're too old to start now. Pardon? Well, that's what I say. Now, remember, I, I didn't begin this till I turned 50. Um, radio and television up until I was 50. And I took my two newswire businesses, I handed them over to my employees, and I said, I'm going to be a sports photographer. And I told my kids, I'm going to the Olympics, and I'm going to do Super Bowl. Then I found out that they don't bring new old guys to be Olympic shooters. It's just too much work. And if they're going to invest in you as an Olympic shooter, they want like 20 Olympics out of you. I know, I'm not going to live that long. So I have shot for the stars because I wanted, I thought it would be fun. I thought I could do it. I wanted to do it. And the results have been, I would say successful, but you can't really make a living at it. I mean, you have to be a rock star. And I mean, like you've got 20, you know, 30 guys that you might meet that play guitar at the club, maybe they go on tour, maybe this, but how many of them actually become a rock star? People who make money as sports photographers, there's just a handful of them. Uh, it's, it's the way it is. Uh, my, my income, okay, I'm old enough, I don't really care if it gets back, you know, you're not supposed to talk about how much you make and that kind of stuff. AP pays me like $350 for a day, uh, for a game, I should say, for a game. Um, the most I will make in a day is $1,000 but I don't work every day. The uh, team photography stuff, the team contracted stuff, it does well. Maybe you could pick up $250, $300 a hockey game as a team shooter, less than that as a going out of business basketball team shooter, uh, less than that as a newspaper shooter. The uh, best money comes from the private jobs. I just had a couple four rich guys flew into town. They're taking their dad out to, to golf to play golf at Sawgrass. Uh, they got the money. It's his it's dad's birthday present. Hey, let's let's hire the Sports Illustrated guy. So I'll get my prize. No problem. I wish that happened every day, <laughs> um, but uh, it doesn't. So so the crowd that's here, I it, it, you're right. It's not gonna. It's not a career choice that I would wish on people, yet I'd have two people I'm mentoring right now who are young, energetic, they have no families, they have no wives or, or husbands or kids, and who knows, one of them might become the next rock star. They're both really, really good, they're both artistic where I'm not, they add that to the table. They're young, they can uh, go, they can move anywhere in the country, that's the other thing is, I am, if I moved to LA or New York, I probably wouldn't have work. Uh, I stay here. I like Jacksonville. I get to be the big fish in a small pond. Uh, when AP has something go wrong, they call me. Uh, like that plane that went on. Do you remember the plane that went on the river? Mm -hmm. I will say this about the sports photography world is that once you get plugged into the wire service business, shooting for news isn't that different. It's the same computer mechanics, if you will, the, the way you <coughs> The way you provide them the photos through an FTP site, the way that you uh, caption the photos, the people you deal with, the way you send the bill to them, and who gets who you get paid by—it's all the same people. So, even though I don't consider myself a news photographer, if something big happens in this town, uh, the Alfaro sank, the president uh, comes to town, uh, ship the, the plane goes into the water. What else did it? King and Queen of, of uh, Spain, Spain came, came to St. Augustine. That kind of stuff. They'll call me for that kind of thing, and I will do that for that particular event, and the pay is usually double, uh, and the the computer work is exactly the same. So it is it is for me to say to say you don't want to become a sports photographer. You, becoming a news photographer is almost the same way as far as the mechanics. And again, I'm the mechanic, not the artist. There are journalists, I am not a journalist, who can tell a story through pictures. I can get a picture to go with your story. And that's sort of what they expect of me. The, uh, the bank that got robbed, the bank that got robbed here in St. Augustine, or not St. Augustine, Jacksonville, it was a while back. Community, community something bank got robbed. People went in there and held hostages, something like that. 
scrambled me out. I got some photos of big bad guys getting drug out of a bank and police officers with uh, SWAT gear on and that kind of stuff. I gave them the photos they needed for the job through the system that AP provides, just as I would have done for a sports event. So the mechanics is the same, which is what I sort of would get into if that's something you're interested in. If you really have no interest in becoming uh, sports or say news, photography and the way the wire system works, I don't know if you really want to get into the mechanics of what I do to get that job done. What do we think? This is where I was gonna break me up and break it up into a question and answers every once in a while rather than waiting it all for the end. So at this point, is, it, is that something that you would be interested in? Is how is the mechanics of what I do to a photograph to get it to a newswire service? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. Now, will the computer cooperate? The, uh, how many of you are familiar with something called photo mechanic? Yes. All right. It is a must. You absolutely have to. Is it showing up there? Okay, good. You absolutely have to open recent. Open recent. There we go. Let's see. What do we want to do? Let's go to the hockey games. These are the photos I get. These are the photos that went to the Times Union yesterday. Make them a little bigger. If I know how to do that, that would be great. You can see it now. I really can't see it. How can I make them bigger? I don't know how to make them bigger. I'll make one bigger. There we go. Uh, I think that's the one they used, actually. Um, Photo Mechanic is a program that if you're going to work with news agencies of any kind, you have to have. Uh, it is a standalone program. It's not owned by Adobe or any of the big companies that try and get you to buy all their stuff. It's a basic sorting and captioning program that every photographer in the country, probably around the world uses, because everything is set up the same way. Everything for that photo, and that's the photo that you and I would have taken, but to a newspaper person, they don't care about that. What they care about is that, is all this stuff over here. The information that is, is down the side here is the, is the same whether you're working with the Miami Herald, New York Times, or the Times Union, or a local te television crew that actually uses that. Actually, local TV actually uses, stills quite a bit of mine. So it's, it's even radio. In fact, I, I would say a lot of radio stations use stills these days just because um, everybody's visual nowadays. So all of those news outlets and sports outlets have the same software and have the same way of looking at this photo in their computer and click the button and they know all the other things. They know exactly what it was taken. They have a, a caption that I would have written uh, or the photographer would have written or when I have a really big job, which does happen and it's nice you have an editor that works for you and you give him the photo and he, oh, he writes all that stuff. But, but the photo mechanic program is the foundation for when you get a job. The email that says, hey, are you available you know, next Monday to, in the afternoon to shoot a basketball game? If you, the yes is done, the price is you say, yeah, I'll do it for that price, yeah, I'm available. They'll send you this file the, the, uh, with the stuff that they need filled in. There's all kinds of codes, all this weird stuff that's, you can't really see that well there. The codes, for each newspaper is different, and some of them are really confusing. Like in the Miami Herald, there's a set of codes that actually sends the photo to the actual department's editor, so that they know they got a guy for sports, they got a guy for news, they got a guy for local news. So they have, they'll even have the file assigned to a specific story. They're so big, they don't want somebody in their office sorting it, they want me, at my end when I send the photo in, to have those codes already in there, which they've sent me the format, or if you will, the template, uh, so it'll actually go to that exact reporter. You screw this up, your stuff doesn't make it to the wires at all. You screw it up more than once or twice, you don't, you're not gonna get called back. There's a lot of people who will do what I do. I would say the biggest way for me to keep my job is to not be a fantastic photographer, is to not screw up. 
These guys are in a hurry. They just want to get the job done. They don't want you to mess stuff up. You don't want to, you send them a bad caption. You mess the codes up and it doesn't end up on their news desk by their deadline. Probably not going to call you back. So being a detailed person, looking at using photo mechanic in a way that you do not uh, misspell words, put the wrong uh, athlete in there or accidentally typed in the wrong code or uh, over one of their codes with some just one letter and you've messed their whole job up. They're getting yelled at by their boss. They don't like to get yelled at by the boss, so I don't get to work for them again. So photo mechanic is, there's a lot to it. You can actually take weeks long courses, how to learn it, but it is fairly self-intuitive and I would say that it's the first thing that anybody that wants to be a sports photographer that actually makes money, you've got to learn how to use this program. There's no other substitute for it. While I'm talking about photo mechanic, filling in names, when I am on a job, AP sends me to cover an Orlando Magic game. I have to, before, by halftime latest, usually middle of the second period, I have to have sent them five or six photos all, all done and ready to go. So that they can get them out before the Getty guy gets them out. And the, the actual newspapers around the world will have a photo of the Orlando Magic game at halftime of that game so that when they're working on the story, they can stick it up on their websites even though the story's not completed, we don't even know who won yet. So I'm taking pictures, I'm running around, I've gotta get, well, how do I know who all these people are? This is uh, <laughs> John Cameron. I'm also sort of a blind guitar. Sean Cameron number 10, okay. How do I know that's Sean Cameron number 10? The second thing you need to buy, is a piece of software, is called Code Replacement. Code Replacement is a website. Code Replacement has, let's just look at one here. It's again, a little bit confusing, but I can fill in, because I have the software, actually you have this, you buy by membership. Again, there's no real replacement for it. They, they constantly um, update every pro team and every college team of any you know stature. You know, I, I, I would UNFs would be on there, for example. Jacksonville University would be on there. The Giants wouldn't be on there. It's just the way it is. But um, so you fill out the, the basics of this. It spits out a file that's coded to match up with photo mechanics. So I, before I go to the game, and if I have to, or if I'm in a rush, or even at the game, it'll take but a minute or two to fill in the basics. What's the team called? You know, uh, sometimes they don't know the coach, so you have to fill in the coach. If you want to change the name of the team, that kind of thing. You want it uh, for AP, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. For other outlets, it's just Jacksonville football team. It's weird enough. College, some to call it, some some news outlets, they don't want to know that it's the. Uh, Ospreys, you know, it's just Jacksonville University. Is that right? The Ospreys, Jacksonville? Okay. So that's also UNF. It's UNF, okay, UNF. <laughs> uh, others, some people some people take UNF, some people have, to have it's University of North Florida, Florida right? right. <laughs> so luckily all of this stuff is sent to you when, when you get the job, but they're all different and they're all over the world. So you can change that kind of thing. You can change the name of the team, but this will spit out a code that I feed into the photo mechanic so that I'm running off the court to the little media room or if it's or sometimes you can actually spin around his little table there you can actually do it right there like I the uh, anybody go to the UFC UFC ultimate fighting show yeah that's right the UFC thing okay that was that big there was a big sporting event in mm -hmm. town where they had the first it made national news it was the first time they completely ignored COVID rules they sold the place out um, I shouldn't say they ignored them. Well, they did. They ignored them. <laughs> they sold the place out, and that made news. We couldn't move. Us as reporters, I got my mask on. I'm at the little cage thing. It's like, you know, I got spit and blood flying on me or whatever it is. And I, But I've got my computer. I've got my camera here. And I've got my computer sitting on my little um, rollaway cart right here. And they got Wi-Fi. I'm doing this. So how do I get those names on it? That code for this code replacement is been fed into my photo mechanic. I have to think about this. <laughs> but I went in order to say things. Uh, I just have to put 
the name of that team, or actually the letter, because it's coded. Let's go back to that. I put in, that was an Orlando team, so I put in O10. Backslash O10, backslash. It fills in Swamp Rabbit forward. Um, even has, you know, has his position, has his name spelled correctly, and there's some weird spelling hockey players out there. <laughs> Uh, so he's got his name spelled correctly, and it's got his number, and it's fed in there. So all I have to do is, and all this other stuff, you know, at, you know, I have to know what period it is, but hockey game, where it's at, the date, the time, you know, the, who I am, all that stuff's there. So really all I'm doing is really quickly putting in whoever's in the photo and, and what they're doing, and I'm out of the next photo. Without it, without it, the, the news outlet wouldn't get it at all. And without code replacement, there are guys who still look that stuff up. They're still, you know, they're, they're looking at a piece of paper and they're typing. I couldn't do that. I I'm, think I'm borderline dyslexic, so who knows what the guy's name would end up being. So those two pieces of software are instrumental in getting the job done. Yes? How do you get the photo from your camera into the photo mechanic? Okay, phone? sure. Are you tapping? Now, now we're getting into things where you can do things your own way. Um, Reuters, a little bit ahead of us with AP with their technology. I go to the Indiana, not Indy, what's our speedway? The Daytona 500. <laughs> I go to the Daytona 500, I shoot all the, the big races. I don't uh, do the, the Coke 400 and the Rolex 24 and that stuff. But the, but the Getty guy, our competition is there as well. The Getty guy and I are sitting there, you know, as far as maybe on our corner from, from the back wall to here, we're shooting the exact same thing. His stuff's going up on a radio signal. He's got a little thing, you know, either clamped to the, to the, uh, sometimes to the inner wall where we're, where we're sitting or standing or something like that. Or somebody's he's got it. somewhere. He's got a little antenna, and he's sending stuff back to the studio. AP, I got a guy on a motorcycle. He comes up, and I hand him the card, and he runs back to runs back at it. So there's different ways that the photo gets from the photographer to the service. That is sort of an extreme one. What would be more normal is I'm shooting with my digital camera. I don't have wireless. I don't use wireless. I don't trust it yet. I'm, what's that Geico commercial? I don't know what commercial is where you're an old guy if you're still printing out directions. I'm not fearful of technology, but it's a lot of places the Wi Fi is not that good. We don't have our own system like uh, uh, Getty's got. So, uh, taking the card out of my actual camera and sticking it into this through a card reader. It'll show up, it'll feed into Photo Mechanic because I tell it to. So, again, the Photo Mechanic software isn't artistic in any way. It doesn't allow it, you to do anything but the basics, which is select the photo. And you can crop if you want, but I don't know any uh, sports or news photographer that uses it. The thing it does have going for it, besides all of this, uh, uh, getting the caption and the coding correct, the other thing that it does, it's really, really, really fast. So if you stick a bunch of photos in there, like, like I would do, it loads them up very quickly. And I can go through them rather rapidly, and I can pick out of, say, it's the first half of a football game, or a be, uh, basketball game, let's do that one. And I have five shots that I think I, I really want to use. I mark those five shots, and then I move them over to Lightroom. I bet you a lot of you guys use Lightroom. Yes, Lightroom? Lightroom yes, Lightroom. yes, yes, yes. I use Lightroom. A lot of guys use Photo Mechanic. Not Photo Mechanic. What's the Adobe? Photoshop. Photoshop. Photoshop, right, that one. I don't use it. Um, I use Lightroom. Other, there's a bunch of different stuff. Here's where you go and you slightly tone, crop. Uh, for me, the biggest thing is Every athlete seems like a, they've got a mask, a helmet, a football visor, a baseball cap, darken their face. So I am lightening shadows right and left all the time. I'm not doing it individually, I'm doing it as a group mass uh, uh, correction to my photos. Uh, I do that in Lightroom. So I don't think I'm probably going into that much about how I use Lightroom because I'll bet you have better Lightroom users among you than I do. I do the basics, I can use it to get the photo looking like I want it to. Then I send it back to Photo Mechanic where I do the caption. There's no reason for me to caption 1,400 photos. I'm gonna to to caption the ones that I have uh, toned, cropped, sent back to Photo Mechanic within my computer. 
then I capture them really quick. And then I, within Photo Mechanic, I simply, I don't want to do this by mistake, but I simply send. And within already preloaded in my computer is, you know, everything from what do we got? LSU, LSU I, yeah. Miami, yeah, whatever. The, uh, when, I, when I worked for a school, a uh, university, when I worked for, uh, I don't know who it is, uh, whatever, and th that list actually goes on both directions. All of those are preloaded in to their, they have a specific website where I have a password when I was given the job, a, a login and a password to be able to put the photo th through the Wi Fi to the newspaper or whoever it is, radio station, whatever it is. Same thing with the wire service. The wire service uses an FTP service just like a newspaper or a radio station would. It's all um, a private website where you're where you're sending your photos. The difference being, um, some are a lot less forgiving than others. If I send a photo into AP Live, I am qualified. AP thinks I'm trustworthy, so they put me into the category of when I put a photo up, it goes out. And all of a sudden, some guy in Japan is writing a newspaper because it's deadline, and he throws the photo up in his Japanese headline, and it's got the wrong guy's name on it. I've made a big mistake, and it's, it's, it's hard to fix. Um, and if you do it too often, you know, they're gonna, they, would, they would just simply stop calling me. I actually did that for one of the first times in a long time at that UFC fight. You know, I, UFC is like, it's like boxing on steroids, right? You got people throwing people around and, and doing all kinds of weird, uh, suppression holes like that but like boxers they have a red corner and a blue corner I don't shoot that much boxing I said red guy blue guy oh it's everywhere the blue guy is mr. brown the red guy is mr. Fred whatever and I'm you know and I've got I've actually got preloaded my caps so all I have to do is know the guy's initials and I'm going to use that code replacement to get the correct spelling of this guy from who knows what country uh, and what weight class he is and all that kind of stuff but I had to have known in my brain that Mr. Brown, who's in the red corner, is wearing blue shorts. And Mr. Fred in the blue corner is wearing red shorts. And you can't go by the shorts. It's the, it's the wristband on the gloves. I messed up. I had a photo go worldwide and they weren't happy with me because I went by the shorts instead of the wrists. And that was just me not shooting enough uh, people fighting each other, boxing or whatever. To, to get that right. So I did a major screw up. Luckily, it wasn't my first rodeo and they didn't get that mad at me. But I, I would, that's just really one of the things I really, really, really don't like. Um, and I did it just a couple weeks ago. Part of it probably was because the, nah, I won't make excuses. <laughs> it was a weird place. It was a weird, weird thing to shoot. Um, so, photo, card, computer, photo mechanic, in the Lightroom, back in the photo mechanic, then send it from photo, me photo mechanic to the FTP. It's at the news. It's at the wire service to the newspaper. Um, I was while we're talking about sending photos to wire services. Have any of you ever shot for either something called Zuma, Icon, or CalSport Media? Okay, this is my little tip of the day for you who may want to dabble in sports. Those are spec shooters um, outlets, i.e. when I go to work for AP, I get paid for the event. It's a, it's a chart, it's a rate, Everybody, everybody's freelancer gets paid off the same rate chart. You know you're gonna get this much money for a football game, this much money for a basketball game, for a PGA golf event, whatever. Um, you know that you're going to get um, residuals. That Tom Brady shot you saw, that was actually from the fights. Um, I'm gonna brag it for a second. You, you, uh, the, uh, the photo that you saw of Brady, he obviously showed up at the fights. Um, Fox News users will need that in their, at their lead page for a while. Um, I'm shooting through two sets of blackened plastic covered cyclone fence. Now one I can do, I can shoot through one set, you know, you sort of figure it out, you find holes and you, you focus your depth of field right, but I'm shooting through two, that's why you see the weirdness, the weirdness around it. But I, but I got the photo, it's not a great photo, I mean, it's, it's, it's in focus, but it's not great, he's not doing anything super, he happens to be smiling. That's, this is sort of my life. 
I provo provided a photo that they wanted. We wanted a picture. We needed a picture of Tom Brady at the fight. So that's what they got, and it went worldwide. They're still using it all over the place, and it was hard to get because I was shooting through these two fences. Um, however, I got to there from where I was started. I have no idea. So anyway, the 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 if you want to do this kind of stuff, or you get something that you think would be useful. These three, these three, oh, I remember what I was saying, I got, you know, residuals. The other way I get paid is people take my photos and they use them for magazine covers, so they weren't not writing a book, they want to put in a book. Um, I remember the, remember the uh, I don't know if you do or not, but the last time the Jags were in Sports Illustrated was the pool shot underwater. You had two, there were two girls in the pool, so you could see that the shot was from underwater. You could actually see the football game. Then you guys probably saw it. Anyway, that particular photo um, I took underwater with like, Mr. Scuba Diver. I wasn't just a little underwater camera. I was like had a mask and weights, all kinds of stuff to be able to stand under there and get the right shot. But that particular photo, because it was so unique and it was one of Sports Illustrator's photos of the year, um, it uh, got a lot of resale. I got magazine, some magazine from Scotland, Scotland Sweden, some one of the city, one of those countries over there, uh, paid me $2,000 after the fact, just to use it in their magazine. So all of these nice ways of getting paid, um, you don't get with a spec shooting. Spec shooting, you're using their access to the wire system to put your photo up. It's fair, it's gotta be fairly easy to get approved by these guys. I've been approved by all three of them, and I'm just not that good. Uh, I would think that anybody that really seriously wants to dabble in sports slash news photography, contact one of these three out there, there's Zuma, CalSport Media, I didn't say that one, but Zuma, CalSport Media, Icon. And if you, when they when they first, you first contact them, they're gonna say, oh, we already got somebody in Jacksonville. Because they think that the only reason you would ever go to them is you want them to get you access to a sporting events. And that is the hard part about it for the wire service side of things. They, they can't go out and get you access. But if you use something say, no, no, I'm shooting uh, the volleyball tournament, you know, college tournament that's gonna be in, I don't know, some beach. And uh, I just wanna, you know, I think that the, you know, I think that there's a market for them. Oh, no problem, let me see some of your work, show them a few photos. They send you, remember that uh, photo mechanic thing? They send you the photo mechanic template, give you your code, because you can put your photos into their wire system and they're not paying you to do that, not one dime. They're not paying you to go to the event, they're not paying you to put it into their system. If by chance somebody takes your photo and uses it, you get somewhere around five to seven dollars. I mean, the, 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 the profit off of a spec shooting sporting event is not much money. So you know, why did I say do that? Because you are taking a photo, doing everything that I just said that you would do for AP or for, for a newspaper or for the New York Times or whatever it is, you're going through all of those steps to feed it up into a wire system that, believe it or not, shows up on AP. So if you go to AP Photo, which, let me see if I can do this even. Let's just see if I can do this. Where is AP Photo? AP Images, see how fast our, our internet is here. Well, when AP Photo shows up, your photo would be at AP Photo. Through it would it would be it would say Icon. It would say Zoom. They're not you're not going to fool anybody thinking oh, I'm an AP shooter by this. But it's on the AP wire so that anybody that goes to that particular all right, where's AP? Oh, boom. Boy, this is slow. Um, all the all the steps you had to go through that I have to go through you would go through for Zuma, you would go through for Icon, and then your photo would end up, you know, here. Right along, you know, my, my AP photo from the fights. Uh, I don't think that's a great photo, but that was one of their picks. I don't know, I really wasn't happy with that, that fighting thing, because I hated that bit screen in, there, in the way. Yeah? I would like to know how, what, what you do shoot with, and how much of it, and are you shooting automatic? Or are you shooting? How I shoot? Yeah, how you shoot. Sure. Um, let me, 
I, I want to just make sure you guys, everything you need to know at this point so far, as far as how it's gone over something too fast, as far as how stuff gets to the wire and how you can put stuff on the wire yourself pretty easily. All right, that's cool. How I, sh how, how I operate my camera. Yeah. Good. Um, I don't use automatic, luckily. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Um, <laughs> but, but I have to say I'm not much farther ahead of that. I have a lot of photos that are out of focus. I shoot, I, I, use, I, use, I use Canon 1DXs. I use the setting for the autofocus. I do the autofocus and manual focus. I might have manual focused that Tom, that Tom Brady photo just because of all the stuff that was in the way, but I hardly ever manually focused. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. that you had to do. I probably did, I, you're right. You on that one, you know about there was too much weirdness, the thing that there's guys bouncing on the, 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 the canvas. I'm not, big, I don't, I'm not a big sports guy, I shoot sports, but, <laughs> you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt a funny, a funny story about how I'm not a sports guy. Jaguars game. You know, at the end of the game before COVID, all the players go out in the middle and all say hi to each other, high five, post photos, and do weird stuff, whatever. And we're running out there with them and trying to be you know, getting pictures or whatever we think we're supposed to do. Well, there was a order from AP New York. We needed to get those celebrity shoes, or not celebrity, uh, cherry shoes. The people, the athletes had taken their shoes and and had them really doctored up, fancied up with different charities, and that was making news. Sports Illustrated did a big thing on it. AP wanted these guys' shoes for whatever purpose. So all the whole game were like shooting people's shoes, right? <laughs> I would shoot somebody's shoe, and then I'd lean up and get the guy's number. I don't, A, I, I, there's no way I could look up the guy's shoe because nobody's seen him before anyway, so I couldn't look it up by the shoe. I had to know who the guy is. I don't know who these people are, for the most part. I know who, I don't know who, I don't know who that, I know who, uh, <laughs> Who do I know? I ride no straight away. Who's her great running, her great cornerback who got straight away. Jalen, Jalen Ramsey, the only guy that would hang out, hang out. He'd come out and hang out with us at the soccer, at the hockey field. So I got to meet him. I would recognize his face, but most faces I do not recognize. So shoe number, shoe number. I'm out here in the middle. Shoe, and I know I gotta get the shoe. Lift up. Crap. He's taking his shirt off yeah. to trade with another guy. So he has got his just his pads on. Okay, I gotta get I have I can't do this without it. I'm not gonna spend a half an hour on the internet looking around trying to match because I also got that thing where you can't look at somebody's face and figure it out. You give me two faces, I have a hard time telling who's who, that type of thing. So I'm not gonna look up this guy on the internet and try and figure out of all the football players who this guy is. So I bite the bullet and says, I'm sorry, who are you? <laughs> now to this day, I can, right now, I can't remember. It was a big shot. It was like Tom Brady light. It wasn't that big. He was a big, big shot. So not only did he like, I'm, you know, there he was, everybody standing around me heard me ask. And they turned around, ah, you know, blankety blank, are you doing out on a football field? You don't know who this guy is, you know. So, so anyway, um, there's my, I've, I've, I've been a fool of myself in lots of different ways. So. And not not being able to recognize the athletes or know about the game has hurt me. If you want to be a good sports photographer, or learn the learn the sports you're going to shoot. That's what they tell you in the books. I'm just not caught up to there yet, or my brain is losing ground. I don't know which. So, how do I, I focus? I use the autofocus. I use the center button, the little teeny thing, rather than using the wider thing. Because if I don't. Almost everything I've got people closer to me, and I'm trying to stay with that guy. So he's going that way, and there's refs running this way, and there's cheerleaders and TV crews. You know, TV crews get priority because that's where the money is. So there's a lot of people in my way a lot of times. So I use that little dot focus thing to, to stay on the guy. I use um, as high of a shutter speed as I can for the lighting, and that's the biggest. The biggest problem is if you do high school, the lighting sucks. Um, you do a pro sport. You know, it's, it's 10 times easier. If you've shot a high school football game, you can shoot a pro football game. High school, successful high school football photographers are better at their craft than pro football photographers. You take a pro guy and you send him to a high school football game, he will come away with junk a lot of the times. It's just the lighting is such a problem. And if you don't know how to deal with it, with, with lowering your shutter speed, uh, uh, 
as, as much as you can, shorten your depth of field. I guess I don't know that much about, but you know, shortening your depth of field uh, lessens the amount of light you need to use to get a good picture. So a short depth of field and lowering your shutter speed is the best I can do to get an action shot. Uh, I am not the artsy guy, so I don't, I, somebody that's like a blurry going for a pass shot, I can't make that look cool. Everything has to be sharp. And when I'm working for almost everybody that I work for, if I would send them a blurry photo, they'd first throw it away, and then the second time they, they would stop hiring me again. It's all about you know, having a very sharp, clean fo fo uh, photo that gives them exactly what they want, not the art, not the fancy, background of, I don't know, I, I don't even know how to describe an artsy photo, but I know that there's a lot of guys that are really good at it. I'm just, I'm just not, uh, I'm not one of those dudes. Uh, while we're talking about my photos, I will. How did you handle the, the cage there? Because I haven't done that, but that looks like you do, right? So how, how do you uh, get rid of, uh, how did you listen to that? Well, a, a lot of the photos I took for that particular event, I did shoot really short depth of field so that it was not focusing on the fence. Shooting through one fence, some of them, and when they're coming back and forth, uh, if you shoot a really short depth of field, obviously, and then they're coming towards you, they're out of focus. They go away from you, they're out of focus. So you're constantly using that dot or the little smallest area of focus you can on the subject, shooting as short of a depth of field so that your fence that's in front of you is not, that's not what I want to look at. Who knows what the, this is the Times Union. I don't care about that. I want, I can't type and talk at the same time. Sorry, guys. I think you pulled your plug out. No, it's. Uh, oh, there we no, go. No, it just it just went somewhere I didn't want it to go. <laughs> I don't know why. Let's see. My photos. My photos. There we go. There's that. There is. You know, you saw me watch. Look at my watch. I have a church story for you. Little boy asks. Uh, I can't type and talk. Little boy asks his dad. Says, sees the preacher take his watch off, sets it on the pulpit. Why, why, did the, why did the preacher take his watch off and set it on his pulpit? And dad says to his son, for absolutely no reason at all. <laughs> if you were a Baptist, you'd get that. <laughs> all right, here we go. So, um, I don't know if it really answered your question or not because I don't know enough about photography even to, to speak it that well. Um, a lot of what I a lot of what I do is take a bunch of photos, try and make sure that they're sharp, try and stay with the people that, that I'm being told I have to get. Um, I don't get a lot of options usually where I get to be. At an NFL game before COVID, we could go where we wanted to go. And, you know, after COVID. We were up in the stands, and we were, there was a lot of places we couldn't go at that. Am I on what? Are you shooting mostly telephoto? Um, maybe there's a signal. Of course you're right. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Kind of lose you. I'm sure you plug in. <coughs> Ah. All right. Um, boy, I am terrible about staying in track. What was the last thing somebody said? We use the telephoto. Telephoto. Sorry. Oh, what yeah, um, yes, I use a, a 400 2.8 a lot. Uh, again, things have changed with COVID. Uh, I use I use that for high school basketball. Not high school. For, we don't even shoot high school soccer hardly anymore. Um, college basketball. I do a lot of Gator stuff. Um, uh, almost all Gator sports, they're sticking us up in the stands for COVID they were. So I'm shooting with a 400. I would say in a lot of ways, because I have a lot of long glass, because I'm sports minded, uh, people who couldn't get jobs because they couldn't get access anymore because of COVID, I'm getting that work because I'm shooting from, you know, I'm shooting with, you know, the old honking lenses sometimes with, with uh, extenders on it. Um, one of the things that's really kept me busy during COVID is AP came up with the idea that every college and pro athlete of any stature, they wanted what's called an evergreen photo, 19 by six, which would be a long skinny photo like what they use on the internet 
with only the player in it, nothing else at all. Which for some sports is sort of hard. It's hard to get certain kinds of players all by themselves in act. Oh, it has to be in an act in action. So I have been going to all kinds of stuff, uh, NCAA events, uh, specifically avoiding action, which is it says right in the directions on that little email. You can says do not follow action. They don't want a picture picture of the uh, catcher tagging the guy running in the third. That would be absolutely useless for that particular assignment. Uh, the guy running towards third, when you can't see the guy maybe in, on third base and he hasn't gotten to home yet, he's in action and I can, I should, oh, and it has to be, sorry, it has to be from his waist to here, in action, and I can only blow it up so high. There's a, they have a part of the instructions to limit how many pixels I can crop it down to. So I can't like sit up there with a 24, uh, 7200 and, and take a picture of a guy running from third to home, I gotta have that 400. In fact, depending on the school, where was I? One of our local schools, it's gonna be uh, UNF, I think. Baseball, their particular rules kept us even farther back. I had to have the, the 400 with an extender, and I still called my bosses in New York and said, I don't know if we're gonna be able to pull this off. And they actually bent the rules as far as how much we could crop it, because there was just no way to get the photo they wanted at the distance they wanted, uh, at the distance that that particular school forced it. I'll be really happy for COVID to be over, but it didn't hurt my business because a lot of things that other sports photographers couldn't do, I could do, I guess. It's just the way it worked out. Um, so did I answer the, the how do I take photos type of, I mean, that's, to me, that's not that great of a picture, but why is it in my portfolio? Well, it's, it's exactly what I do. That is, I mean, you can see his, probably I blew it up how you see his eyelashes. You can, you know, read the, sort of read the logo on the football. Um, I shoot really tight. I don't know if you if you see my stuff. A lot of guys will have, have the, you know, the guy at the newspaper. Um, they they want to hope they want to tell a story in a photo. They want like three guys chasing another guy or whatever it is. They got a story going on. Me, I mean, that was a bigger bigger picture, obviously. But I, I tend to to uh, these are going through. Yeah, I tend to shoot really tight. Once in a while, though. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know speed is important, of course, the depth of field, but how much attention do you pay to your ISO? I mean, as low as possible, obviously. Um, yeah. But uh, is that right? That's the, that's like the, yeah. I don't, yeah. I didn't think about what that was, yeah. So, <laughs> let's say you're shooting one that's really high and really grainy. Do you post process it? Oh yeah, everything. I never send a photo straight in, unless there's a, there are weird jobs that tell you to, but very few. If you shoot for Sports Illustrated, they want a, a raw. A, you can send them the crop to show what you got, but they want the raw photo. You had in unprocessed raw. Unprocessed raw. So I, I when I shoot for Sports Illustrated, I have to have my camera set in JPEG and raw. Whereas most all, especially AP. Everybody else is in such a rush. Everybody wants it fast that they don't want raw. They don't want me shooting raw. So it slows the camera down, it slows the editor down, or if, he's, if he has to deal with it. So I don't shoot that much raw. I know it's got a lot of advantages, and if you've got time to tweak with stuff, it's great. But every, most everything I do, they want it. As soon as I've taken the picture, they're already yelling, how come they don't have it? So I do very, very little in raw. But there are certain assignments that I have to do both, and either send them the raw with the assignment, or Hold on to the, the uh, I have part of my NFL stuff this last year was they wanted me to take the raw just in case they needed it. That was an NFL assignment. I never, they never asked for it. Well, actually they did, they asked for something a little bit. But I hardly ever shoot raw. I almost always shoot JPEG and it's always because I'm in a rush and my client is in a rush and that's what they want. Um, the, um, ISO. So yes, I do doctor everything. Everything goes through Lightroom, and I, everything. Every time I say everything, I'm going to have to say there's probably a, a time that that's not true. If I shoot for Reuters, Reuters is really weird. Reuters, you can't change anything. You know how you? I was saying you take the shadows out of a. I did the El Faro, the sinking of the El Faro. Obviously, I didn't see the ship sink, but all the activity around it and the, the families and all that kind of stuff. I was doing that work for Reuters, and. Their 
my stuff was dark, my stuff was in shadows. I would normally bring those shadows up in my um, Lightroom program. Naturally do it. That's what I took. I just didn't have it, you know, lit that way or whatever it is, or you couldn't see it as well. But it's obviously the photo. I'm not pasting something in there, and I'm not pasting my, sh my shadow. I'm using, I'm just bringing the shadows up for the whole photo. So in everybody else's opinion, that's okay. In Reuters, that would get you fired. Uh, red eye, I take a flash picture of you, and for some reason you got red eye, I can take red eye out of photos for anybody but Reuters. Uh, it's just their, that's their thing. I don't know if somebody gone or they lost a lawsuit, or there was a big scandal a few years ago about news agencies, you know, doing weird stuff, setting up photos, messing with photos, changing, slightly changing the color of stuff. Um, and I think Reuters got in a lot of trouble, or one of the people that got in trouble for that. So I think they sort of overdid their response and made people like me not change anything. And, you know, I mean, that's that's what the boss says. That's what, you know, they get, they get what they want. I felt bad about sending them the photos that way, but they ran them and people seemed to like them. And that's the, that's the way that particular job went. Um, so I've rambled for a while here. I want to stop and see. Talk about software, talk about code of place. Mm -hmm. Just talked about uh, JPEG and RAW. We're sticking, sort of sticking to this thing. I'm probably taking too much time. Okay, um, two things I can go with. One is speci speci special things that I do for certain sports, or what I do to get business, which is more important. What I do to get business, things I do specialty, special sports. Okay, special sports, okay. I would've gone the other <laughs> way. Um, you know, I, I really am a, a marketer at heart. And so I am just gonna probably sneak some of my how I get business stuff. Okay, good. Um, what I do for special sports, pick a sport. Uh, what, what do we do around here? We got, we got NASCAR around here. Um, I shoot a lot of NASCAR for AP. Uh, uh, what do I do special for it? We, um, I got the, I know I got the job shooting AP NASCAR because of the long glass I had. It's the first question I had. Oh, this guy's got a 400, okay. Put him on the back right, back runway, runway, straight away. <laughs> it's sports terminology. Put, put him on the back, you know, where the, where the guys are running down the back straight away of the, at the Daytona, uh, Daytona 500. Because I had the big glass, I could see the guys coming straight at me. You know, if they're gonna get in a wreck, they can't go that far either way. So that's where they stuck me. And I would, wouldn't, I know I wouldn't have gotten that particular assignment had I not um, kept with the long glass. Uh, I wasn't joking about the guy with the, on the motorcycle. You know, if, if a wreck happens, there's a guy coming up with a motorcycle wanting, wanting that car. Same time, the, the Reuters guys are sending it over the photo thing. And we got a guy in the, and his name's John Rayox out of Orlando, and he is, the editor extraordinary, he just sits in there and he, he's got uh, six different photographers all around in the NASCAR field uh, taking pictures up, in the, up in the, on top of the building, stuff like that. And so he gets a stack of cards, right, from the guy on the motorcycle. Remember that the photo mechanic thing that I told you about? The photo mechanic also tells the editor whose camera came from. Every, um, every NASCAR season begins with us taking our camera to John Rex was in this case. He takes our takes the codes off our camera and puts it in his photo mechanic. So when he sticks that card in his computer, his photo mechanic knows the photo was taken by Gary McCullough because it came out of my camera. If I buy a new camera in the middle of the thing or I borrow one or, or, or something that messes him up, he wants to know. You borrow a camera, you rent one, you pick your buddies out or whatever it is, you got to get him those numbers because he's, he's doing that speed uh, whatever uh, captioning and sending non-stop entire race and especially when a wreck happens or something like that because he's got New York on the phone. New York watches sort of a joke amongst uh, us in the newsrooms at the sports rooms that the editors are all back in New York watching TV. They see something happen in TV. They want that photo. Like now, uh, we're not that good. We do get it to him quick, but he's got people yelling at him saying, where's the photo of, we just saw it on TV. We know you got it. Where is it? How come we don't have it yet? So. Photo mechanic is a must for him to be able to get the photo out. Um, other sports. What do we got? What else we got? I should I should while we're doing this actually I have all my other sports. Okay. There's football. I'm just that was my football. Football stuff. Let's go to pick another sport. 
Baseball. All right, uh, baseball, baseball. Do I have baseball? You see baseball, or do I have it in the other? You know, because we do. What would I have in here? Other pro sports. That must be where baseball is. <clears throat> I wish we had a pro baseball team here. Uh, the guys who work for AP in the Orlando area, you know, they're closer to Tampa. The Miami area, you know, so we don't have that good of a. That's that's our arena football, and our soccer. Um, so we don't have a pro baseball team. We've got a semi-pro baseball team, which doesn't have any money for people like me. So. I used to do work for them and they used to pay pretty good. And maybe because they paid us good back then, they can't afford to pay us now, but that's become an intern's job, which I'm, again, people gotta work within their budget. I'm not saying they're bad people because they won't hire me. I wish they did, but I also don't, you know, I'm not gonna go there and do it for, for laughs or whatever. So here's my other sports. Hopefully baseball's in here. Arena football, arena football. There's a son, that bit. You can see how that one is. That's a son's baseball. That's taken with a 400, 400 uh, lens with a 2.8, con not 2.8, 1.4 converter uh, over the left field wall. You gotta do that before the sun goes down. At least I have to. Uh, the lighting in there is really, really good, but by the time you stick that converter on there and you're that far away, and then you get, you can, I don't, even with that, I'm probably gonna cut that down to about an eighth of the frame. So the frame, think about that picture being, you know, that's one eighth of the property to be able to, to get that shape. They have 600s, uh, 600, um, four, uh, whatever the 600 is. The 600 millimeter, I don't know four, what the S probably. F4. Yeah, F4 probably, you're right. Uh, it's about the same price. My 400 2.8 cost me $13,000. I think the 600 F4 is the same price. I just, I can't justify it. I, I'd be nice to have, but I can't justify spending it. Uh, the 400 is definitely a must for football, for a lot of stuff. And I can do stuff like this with an extender. Uh, that's shot from another, another thing I would never shoot in, during COVID. I'm actually sitting on my butt inside the sun's dugout, which is now the jumbo shrimp. But I'm on my butt in there, dugout. That's why you see the angle. I'm really big for shooting low. I had a, anybody here know Richard Dole? Richard Dole, you should have the speaker. Richard Dole is probably the number one Formula One photographer worldwide. I mean, he is the big cheese, and he lives in St. Augustine. His name's Rich, I think his website's Rich Dole or Rick Dole, but he is really, really, really good. He is a, a Nikon ambassador of light or whatever they call him, I mean, he's, he's one of the, he's a big shot in several different ways. But he, in my early, career when he was giving me advice and stuff was shoot low. You know, if you're at a football game, you see everybody standing around like this, get as low as you can. And I, I COVID messed that up for me, but I, with him, that advice was, was crucial. In fact, as you see how that ball cap sticking up there, to be able to see his eyes, to see the ball on the eyes in action, that's sort of what the game's all about. So being low, I'm looking up into his eyes, and not only am I looking up into his eyes, the light's at a better angle coming back to me. So whatever light's coming up from, you know, this probably was still daylight there, but if there's, if there's a stadium lights or whatever it is, they're probably coming back to me. Where was she singing? I have no idea where she was singing. Oh, it had to be a baseball, probably was a baseball game. What's that? That's Sons. some sport. That's Suns? I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Arena football. Ah, me trying to be artsy. I put this in here so there's somebody looking at me and say, oh, he's artsy, we can hire him. <laughs> I, and I really copied, somebody else did this. Somebody else, oh, they're always taking pictures of stuff on the ground. I did it and I stuck it in there so that I could say I'm artsy. But this is the kind of stuff I like. I like action. I, like, I do like people running into each other and messing with each other. Me trying to be artsy again. That is cool. That is a little artsy. Arena football. Uh, we still have a soccer team. They're still around, right? But again, the soccer team is, the, we had a pro soccer team, North American Soccer League. I think they've changed leagues. What did they call them? Armada. Armada. Are they still around? I know that they stopped renting, when they stopped renting the baseball field to turn it into a soccer field, uh, which was really expensive, I guess, then they moved it out to UNF. Sales went through the, into the toilet and they ran out of money. 
and so I don't shoot any soccer anymore. I did enjoy it. I shouldn't say I don't. I, I do shoot Orlando soccer, um, shoot the women's and men's, uh, the Pride and the Orlando City, but not that much. <laughs> and and we had. Um, I like. I think you missed the ball. <laughs> the um, the uh, emotion is a big deal. I don't know. I mean, you guys being photographers in whatever category, emotion is better than no emotion. Well, it's the same thing in sports. Um, if you've got, if you we did we did more sports. Didn't we? There we go. You know who that is. No, you lost the picture. Oh, how long has that been going on? I've been talking for five minutes. No, no, it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is. There you go. Uh, yeah. All right. That guy. Yeah. They actually. This isn't. This isn't from the job that I'm talking about. But the PR firm for him hired me to follow him around for a whole three days at, at uh, uh, Daytona Speedway, which was a blast. I mean, the guy to me is a real guy. Here he is actually making a donation at Tim Tebow's charity event, uh, which is another reason why I would like the guy. But he is he is the real deal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, me being artsy. I must have stuck every art picture I put into my portfolio just to prove that I can do it. Um, nothing really that big of a deal. I mean, yeah, Rex, 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 I should say, my best rec shot would be under my recently published portfolio. Where's that at? Which is probably not recent, but it's it is published at least. Uh oh, ah, hit the cord again. There's a. <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal here? I'm not like jumping on it like a. All right. There you go. Um, that's as big as that gets. There we go. So I, I actually am detouring from sports just for a second. You don't have to be a good photographer to get in Time Magazine. I can prove to you because I walked out of my house, I had my two, uh, 7200, and I had a little mirrorless that Canon made and then stopped making as soon as they made it. It was a piece of junk. It took, you, took, you hit the button and it's like a half a second later, it, it, it focused and fired. Couldn't really use it for anything, but it was a really wide, uh, I had a wide lens in it and it's, in my bag right now, it goes everywhere. I guess if I was to get in the, right. so I've got it. I, it's little, like it's small, I can carry it anywhere with me. So I sat it down and I hit the little button and took this picture. I took a whole bunch of pictures of what I thought were really cool houses being torn up, something like this. But, but a little, you know, fairly inexpensive, uh, not a whole lot of thought went into it, but it ended up uh, in Time Magazine. And I ended up selling this to some Insurance company put it in the New York Times as a full page ad and paid me. I think it was two thousand dollars again. It seems to be something like that. It was a lot of money, more than more than I got for this. Um, How did you get it in the Times? AP AP gave it. and AP gave it the Time, which is why I didn't get that much money for it. Uh -huh. And but then when somebody uh, like a, a private PR firm says we want to use it, well, they they're not a news outlet, so they can't buy it from AP. So AP tells them to call me and I tell you this is my one of my little sales tricks if you want to say uh, there are programs that you say I'm gonna sell my photo and you can punch in you know what kind of you know is it a magazine is it a newspaper how many people are gonna see it you know how long do they want to use it there's all these options then it comes up with a price to tell tell the client what you're gonna charge them. and I'm sure that, that program is really cool and I actually did it, had it for a while every time somebody calls you say I want to use this photo of yours how much? My answer is, what's your budget? Every time, every time that number has been higher and sometimes even double or triple what I thought they would pay me. I wouldn't think whoever that, whoever that news agency was gonna give me $2,000 for a picture that I took with my little toy camera practically. But hey, that's your budget, I'll, I'll, I'll sell for that, that's no problem. So, tell, that's my little advice there is to, Ask them to, if they lowball you, then you can always, you know, say no, 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 I can't do that. But it's sometimes a surprise, it always seems like to me. If you're not really uh, into going into it as deeply as you have gotten into it, let me pull this down. Um, it is possible to get high school and non uh, Big Ten colleges to pay for photos that you take during their games. 
I got, oh, okay. High school, they'll pay maybe 15 or $30 per shot. But you can get a kind of a little bit of a reputation by having those kind of pictures. Uh, colleges, I went to Northeastern University up north. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of their sports uh, shots. Um, they would pay me $100, $150. And who's paying you the school? I'm just sorry. The, the department, the, uh, the athletic, athletic department. department. Right. Athletic departments are great customers. I mean, the LSU, uh, they all have somebody, money. You know, whoever. Uh, a lot of golf, you know, when they, the SEC golf championships always hit uh, somewhere from Georgia. Uh, baseball teams come here and play. But so, if you so just golf. wanted to, you know, maybe get started. But now, the hard part would be you already took the photo, then you say, Do you want it? Or are they saying, We want you to take this photo for us? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, a number of times, uh, for instance, uh, the Northeastern gave up its football. Um, uh, team uh -huh. and one uh, one year they it was a big deal at the end of the, uh, the, the that game that they actually won they put the coach's shoulder on everybody's shoulder and that was a great photo well, you had it you had, I had, you the, had photo. the photo but and that, what yeah. they told me to do was yeah. make sure that you, that you get the coach in the picture ah yeah okay but it's okay. those kind of things yeah um, it is uh i mean you could make uh thousand dollars a month or two uh, doing that sort of thing but there's no rush to it that's okay the thing. there's no rush it, they, you have to put on all those codes and everything yeah that would be that would be, that is just make things nicer i do have clients that don't make me do this and i, I am i do give it a lower rate <laughs> it's actually almost half i raise i have a rate thing on my website and the rate for non-captioned photos is half of what captioned photos are um Speaking of, I did leave one of the ways into the wire business, if you want to say that, or into making money off of sports, is Max Preps. Anybody your shot for Max Preps? Max Preps is CBS Sports website that covers high school sports. It's the number one website for high school sports worldwide. And they have a, a photograph department, if you will that. You can type in any high school and any sport and It'll give you stats, it'll give you all kinds of stuff, but then they have photo galleries. And people, I'm, I'm a Max Preps photographer who would put my photos of high school games up at Max Preps website, and then it has a button where parents can buy those photos. Uh, some people can make a good living at that. The way I look at it is the amount of money paid by the Times Union of the Record for me to cover a high school football game wasn't that much. But I would also take those photos and I'd stick them on Max Preps. So I had a paycheck for being there, and then I would get hopefully some money over the course of the next year or two. Some, some people buy photos that are 10 years old. Who owns stuff. the photos that you take? I do, unless somebody specifically makes me sell, makes it be part of the contract. Um, if I had, if Tebow was, if I was taking photos when Tebow was around, I had a high school picture, picture of Tebow, I would be like, uh, there's a, I know, remember his name but there's a guy here in town that has that photo has several of those photos he keeps making money off of tim tebow high school photos um but yeah i don't uh, and when somebody hands me a contract like the newspapers that i mentioned earlier they had me they wanted me to sign a contract that when i took a photo that they would have all the rights to use the forever and that i couldn't give it to anybody else to which i said okay then my rate's going to be this instead of that which was like a triple because they were taking away my ability to sell it outside of what they are doing which is, they weren't paying that much in the first place. And so what they said, and the guy's probably been fired, I know he's been fired right now, so I can say this, but the guy who told me says, we'll just pretend that we, you, sign, you signed it and we have it somewhere. <laughs> and so they never made me, made me abide by it. Um, so redi residual sales is a big part of being able to make an income in the sports world and max preps Again, you gotta contact him, you gotta show your portfolio, sort of like Zuma and uh, Cal Sport Media and Icon, but for the high school level. Um, high college is tricky. For a long time, we could not sell or even give a high school, or excuse me, a college photo to a student. You sell it to the school, no problem. Athletic departments, no problem. But if I had a parent come up to me at a college game, which like happens all the time, and say, I wanna buy a picture, you just got my kid doing a, Touchdown, I'd love to buy that picture from me. I'll give you 50 bucks, you know, and just email it to me. No problem, right? It's a violation of NCAA rules. Um, and uh, they really got mad at a bunch of people. I'd never got 
caught. <laughs> well, I didn't know that at first. When I first got started, I, I started out on a website. It was called Florida Sports Photo, and you could log on to Florida Sports Photo, and any photo I took from a dance group to a high school group to a college group, if I took the picture, it was up there. If you wanted to buy the photo, you just pay the money for it. And I found I was violating all kinds of deals. The, <coughs> FAF, the Florida High School Athletic Association complete, has complete control of their photos to anybody other than news outlets. So if I took, in fact, I know the guy from Clay County, the, the newspaper photographer, you won't mind, his name's Randy, uh, Lefko, Randy Lefko. He's the newspaper photographer for Clay County, the Clay Today. His, if you log on to the Clay Today, the website of the newspaper, if they got a photo of a high school uh, player during a playoff game, and they say, oh, you wanna buy this from the paper? Yeah, here's the click this button. They banned him from any uh, post uh, <coughs> high school everything because of that. Times Union and the record do the exact same thing. Why they had it out, well, we think we know why. There's rumors why they had it out for him personally, but there's weird rules out there. Um, and nobody seems to enforce them until they, somebody wants to get you. Uh, I got out of that. I stopped doing it because it wasn't making me that much money to, to risk getting gotten. So, um, I've run way over, haven't I? Yeah, good stuff. Oh, wow. I, I really did not, <laughs> didn't. Um, I want to get to the part about me getting money. All right, <laughs> there are a stack of these in the back. I am going to hand them out right now because I want you to actually have them in your hand. Have them in your hand because, now why do you want it? You don't care if I have one of these things. Because I pay 10% of every job. The guy who, I, I shot a bunch of golfers from New York today, I follow them around. Another photographer in town uh, was, had been offered the job and he couldn't do it, he was double booked. So he called me up, you know why he called me up? Because the last three times he called me up, I gave him 10%, which is what I'll give you guys. <laughs> so just make sure that if you're recommending somebody, and if I actually get the job, they know where it came, I know where it came from, it'll be 10%. Not a lot of money, but it's better than not getting anything, right? So that's what these are for. The other half of this is, I think I'm a marketing genius, right? I think I'm a marketing genius, so I put my marketing skills to printing this card up, which shows, you know, Take pictures. Do you know how many people? You're gonna send all these pictures. You know, stack back there. I want you to take. If you want to take 50, these take 50 of uh, Because they're absolutely no use to me as a postcard, which is what they're designed to be. I printed these things up in the mass thousands. I rented from the companies that rent mailing lists for every athletic director and major college coach in the country. I paid for the postage to send these to every one of those guys. Not one call. A cold call of a card saying, hey, you got a team coming to Jacksonville or whatever it says on there. I get calls all the time for people wanting to hire me because they have a team coming to Jacksonville. I get a, a lot. You know, and schools paying me for my time is better, is a higher rate than AP or a lot of, it's about anything, just about anything else. So it's word of mouth. It's people who have had a good experience with me People who've had um, uh, the ten percent, well, you know, it's not that much money, but it's like I said, I mean, I know five guys I could turn a job over to. The one guy who's you know giving me a kickback. I'm out. I think this is not a normal thing. I don't know anybody else that does this. I used to send Starbucks cards. Now I just give cash. But uh, I don't know anybody else that does this. But I figure, you know, what the heck? You know, it seems to even if it even if it doesn't really drum up that much business, you know, people appreciate it. And they did me a favor by sending me some business. I uh, I could talk and talk and talk because. I like to talk about I'm seeing if there's anything important here that I didn't get to. Just, just got to know. Like I said, the important part was I want to get paid. Somebody out here is going to send me some work. I'm going to make a couple thousand dollars from being here. <laughs> It'll happen. Uh, there's all kinds of little details, but uh, nothing that big of a deal. Um, you want to show us any more of this before you're out? Sure, there's that, there's that uh, photo, one of the, a photo, not the photo of the year, a photo of the year for, and that's my, uh, it's not really my back straightaway, that's corner one. Extra money, uh, there's my, there's the, this. If you wanna be a sports photographer, one of the things they say is to go to the workshops. There's two really good workshops, one in LA, 
uh, called Sports Shooter, one in uh, Colorado Springs called Summit. The, the top by directors of photography, at this time the director of photography for Sports Illustrated used to be the White House photographer for Bill Clinton. He was one of the teachers of this thing, right? So you go to these workshops and you're gonna learn all this stuff, right? I, being, being the market, marketer rather than the photographer that I am, I spent more money, the class cost like $1,000, unless you gotta get a hotel in LA or whatever it is. I spent more on alcohol for those instructors than I spent on the tuition. But what happened was I sat down with people like the director of Sports Illustrated and I pulled, we pulled out a napkin and I drew this picture. I drew almost exactly that layout of that picture. First time ever, there's, there are pools in Miami. If you go to the Miami football field, there's a pool there. But you can't see the game from underwater. It's the first time you could ever do this. So I took forever to talk to Jags into letting the guy with the freaking, you know, all this gear into their pool it was all brand new and fancy and stuff like that. But anyway, that was drawn up in a napkin, buying a couple of drinks for the director of photography for Sports Illustrated. That is, um, my secret, my thing, whatever it is, is I'm nice, I try and be nice to everybody. I buy, you know, you go into a, I go to this Veterans Memorial Arena uh, three or four times a week. I give cookies, little bags of cookies to the guys, the gals, the gals at the security gate. Um, I stole that from a guy. Uh, another, another photographer, he carries them in his bag and he gives them, he does the same thing, he's called the cookies. He does enough, he's called like the cookie photographer. I don't do it that much, but I, I'm nice. To, I try to be nice to everybody. I try and help people say, look, you know, you need me to do sports, I'm here. I don't compete with you in any other category. I will not do weddings. I do not do rock stars. I do not do anything, really. I'll do news just because they got nobody else in town. But, um, so you're not gonna, I'm not gonna like steal in somebody's wedding business. I don't do high school's portraits. Um, that was a poster that came out of Max, a Max, they bought a Max Preps photo for me for a poster. I'm trying to think of anything else. Here's somebody that stole a photo from me. I did not get paid for that. That's Applebee's, with that money. And, they were, and by the way, I think it's Applebee's. I better have the right place. <laughs> Isn't Applebee's that does that, that sports montage in there? They do this all over the country and they're ripping off photographers everywhere because they'll go to the photographer, they'll get a quote, and then they'll not want to pay it which is almost every time, and then they'll find some way to get the photos around by not getting it uh, licensed. And they get away with it. I said I don't do rock stars. That's a, you know I like to shoot low? That's me shooting low. That camera's actually sitting on the grass. Um, I don't do rock stars, but this was a paid, this was a, actually a news story. The Sheik Omar, His Royal Highness, blah, 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 who owns Ameris, not owns, what's the big airlines, Ameris? Uh, Emirates. Emirates. He owns Emirates. When they when they did the plane first plane from Orlando to Dubai, he came over and had a big party. His good friend Ricky Martin was there, so I did a rock star. Okay. A rock star. Yeah, there's a rock star. There you go. Uh, and he comes down on that stuff. Um, anybody heard this? This was that was photo of the year, and that was actually just another sort of just scooping on. Um, anybody else heard the, the, the photo, the, the phrase, don't shoot him full frame? Does that mean anything to any of you? Good. Because Ricky Martin's manager came up to me because we did the concert and then we're like this little hotel room and there's like five scantily dressed stewardesses, all blonde, I guess that's the Emirate way. And the sheik, what's his name? And they're all hobnob and stuff like that. And he's like posing for pictures with different Whoever's. And his manager comes over and says, Don't shoot him full frame. To which I, you know, he, first of all, I'm not working for him. I'm working for AP, who's been hired by the airline's PR firm. Uh, so I, sure, whatever. I have no idea what he's talking about. So I feel glad. You guys don't know what he's talking about either, right? After the whole thing's over, and I'm already taking the photos, I say, What did you mean full frame? Because full frame to you and I would mean that's, that's a kind of a, the, the uh, sensor in the camera. There's full frame, and there's three quarters, there's different kinds of sensors. But how can I not shoot you full frame? I go, what does that mean? He says, you can't shoot him below the waist. So, but yeah, that's, I've never heard it before, but that's what it means. If some, some guy says, don't shoot that guy below the full frame, means don't shoot his, 
business, whatever. Right? <laughs> Never heard that before. Questions? Ready to get out of here? I enjoyed it. It went by faster than I didn't think I would have enough to say. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. But I appreciate it. Thank you very much.